<laughs> yes, that's a bendy straw. You see that? That's how you drink a cocktail here on Security Weekly, huh? <laughs> <He's dead cock. laughs> this was full right before the break, too. Ne- next, he'll show us how to shave your mangina. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you were going to say when we were coming <laughs> no, back? No, You said you had something to say. <laughs> oh, it wasn't no, about no, a man no, job. No, that wasn't it. <laughs> Thankfully. So now that, now that Karen's got everybody's behavior. <laughs> yeah. the clip, right? so, and everyone was on their best <laughs> behavior every, for we, that we interview, were, too. We were, we, were, we were doing the best we could. <laughs> so uh, speak, uh, speaking well, of... Try your best. Try your people. Best. Right. Try. So speaking we of actually, the behavior. drinks have nothing to do with the long break. We all had to put bandages on our tongues from biting them so hard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And now we're going to drink alcohol to cleanse Cheers. the wounds. Uh, sidecars. Uh, with, with side fresh car. Side cat. With, side uh, car. With fresh lemon juice and fresh mm. lemons. cognac and cognac. Uh, Benedictine. And it doesn't look like cat vomit. And uh, a little we simple about It looks the same as the drink that I no, made. There's it doesn't no bubbles taste on like top. it. There's no well, bubbles before on Jack top. put more sugar in it, it tasted pretty much like cat vomit. <laughs> a sidecar <laughs> should be a bit puckery. Mm-hmm. It should be a bit, but not um, super. My face shouldn't cave in on itself. No. It, well, you know, there are things that I should make you wouldn't enjoy, but there are things like a Toronto, which would... <clears throat> yeah, we'll, we'll get more adventurous. Uh as the summer progresses, <laughs> yeah, wait, we'll bring the bottles of Frenet. You know, we'll, someone we'll, likes that. We'll bring the uh, Frenet Branca in and start pucker teaching people how to pucker. Uh, nice, nice. <laughs> All right, all right. So, <laughs> no, please speak- don't use the word pucker on the show ever again. Okay. okay. So, speaking of puckering, um, <laughs> hey, at least no. we didn't say moist. <laughs> well, we could, we could, because that this that next might actually make. <laughs> People moist. Um, <laughs> enough of the segues. Um, I had an idea. Oh, we broke the hose. So <laughs> this year at DEF CON, it's official. The fail panel is no more. Oh, oh. say it uh, isn't so, Larry. You however, so would love the fail panel. I did. Panel. I, did. I, 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 in fact, love the fail panel so much. We're not keeping the fail panel alive. But I want to keep the spirit. Of the fail panel alive. You so registered a domain. Didn't I did you? not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so what uh, I am going to do is I am going <clears throat> to submit a CFP to revive the spirit of the fail panel. It will be a panel discussion, very much like Mr. Mortman hosted. Um, I, I will likely for, be the for host. one year that ran for what five five years, years or whatever, if not more. Um, in that we'll have the panel, much like we did. You get some time. Each one of the panels gets a time to to speak. It will be very roasty, like the fail panel. But there's one additional rule. You need to do some sort don't of don't talk present. about fail panel. No, yeah, don't talk about fail <laughs> panel. Uh, you need to have something that you can present at research. Very much that I took with this this whole thing. It doesn't necessarily have to be serious. It could be serious. It could you could drop O Day, you could do whichever, but it's your chance to get your twenty minutes. The only problem is that you need to deliver it very much as if you were delivering a stand up comedy routine. As in it's gotta be funny. Well there's I, gotta be some humor to it. I, I, I think all I think all funny. my I think all my <laughs> presentations are funny. Does that count? <laughs> yeah, but you gotta go you gotta go over the top. Over. You got to go above and beyond. So that said, I, I need co-panelists, and I need co-panelists pretty quick because CFP is going to end before we know it. That reminds me, there are people I have to flog that are supposed to be part of a panel. That are, there are two panels. So three, three panels. sides, on, on, three sides on that. Gun. If you have something that you'd like to talk about and you are prepared to do it in a humorous manner, please send me a note at Larry. At securityweekly.com, and let's chat and let's see if we can figure, figure out, out something to get some folks on a panel uh, so that and, we can get this CFP in. Uh, uh, I will volunteer that, not to, to add research, but I'll volunteer to uh, find something embarrassing that we can get away with at that hotel to wander around and continue the tradition of raising funds for. Absolutely. Uh, I don't remember the numbers. I know that David shared them, but I know that many, many thousands of dollars were raised for EFF. Yes. I know that um, Barnaby Jack's um, Barnes yep. girlfriend and family benefited from uh, one year 
mm-hmm. where is this one we make waffles? The, yes, uh, David has made waffles. Uh, Chris made, Hoff has made waffles. We've we made have bread, handed out bre- bread, flat breads, and and, and there have been a bunch anymore. of things. Um, no. but I mean, it, it, it's it's fun. It's good fun. I, I'm glad to hear that you're stepping up. It's a big project that you're stepping up to. So yep. I'll, I'll I'll publicly embarrass myself and help you raise funds. Like I said, EFF has been a great benefactor. Barnes uh, friends and family were benefactors when they uh, were in their uh, worst time of need. And others have benefited from this over the years, and so uh, I'm glad you're doing that. So if you've got cool stuff, why don't you join Larry? Yep. Reach, reach out to Larry and see see what uh, you guys Absolutely. can make happen. And, you've got to make it fun. And I'll help you uh, be embarrassing. <laughs> yes. And as long as you're talking about that, there will be a DEF CON beard and mustache competition this summer. Um, Rance has got some things that he's dealing with, and we're sending our best wishes I'm to him. I'm entering this year. I am uh, entering. So Rance will probably be involved at some level this, again this year. Redbeard probably will. What are the categories? There are four categories. There is full beard. There is partial. There is mustache. And then there is the uh, unlimited freestyle, whatever. Anything goes. And that's where the women often win because it's uh, creativity counts. So there have been knitted... Uh, they bearded, just all sorts of crazy things, and it's you just don't having have, like, fun. Middle aged guy with a little bit of gray in it <laughs> category. Uh, actually, there are quite a few of those. If you were to weave those. like feathers and LEDs and stuff, yeah. in it, you could win in the creative. There, category. There's the creative stuff could work. You know, yeah. it's it's good. it's mostly just good fun. We we like take over the stage and. Wait, wait. I, I want I want to roll back though, Larry. When are we doing this panel? Because hell, I'll volunteer, man. This uh, this will be uh, at DefCon, but yeah, I've got as part of the CFP submission, I need to have the list of co-panelists. So Ooh, time, okay. is a, time is of so the time is of so the So you essence. mean I have to commit? <laughs> yes, and you, you and, and you have to give enough of, give enough of an abstract <laughs> that Larry I, can make a compelling yep. proposal, Compel- compelling argument. Yep. <clears throat> All right, we'll talk offline. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You know how to find me. <coughs> Sorry. Are we going to do a show? Yeah. Yeah. Bring me another Smurf. <laughs> <laughs> You've been watching Californication again. No. <laughs> Sponsors. Sponsors. Stories we- of the Week is brought to you by Anapsis, the leading provider of solutions to protect ERP systems from cyber attacks. Customers can secure their SAP, Oracle, and business critical platforms from espionage, sabotage, and financial fraud risks. Visit them on their web at anapsis.com and by Pony Express. Check out the Community Edition and turn your Nexus 7 into a lean, mean, pen-testing machine. For all those hard-to-reach places, there's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at ponyexpress.com. And by Black Hills Information Security, the leaders in penetration testing and active defense. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to request a quote today. Whew. <clears throat> now we have stories. Reload your pages. Row hammer. Did you put yours in? Row hammer. I did put mine in. Excellent. Yeah, he went from zero to seventeen in about thirty seconds. That's right. And then he was done. And, and then, then he was, was done. And now he needs done. a cigarette. So who wants to talk about row hammer? Row hammer. We tried to get does him it, on the. Does tried? it have a cool logo yet? Because if it doesn't, I'm not even going to be part of this. It has to have a it, sexy name and a cool logo. It does have a cool logo. I actually expect him to have theme songs now. And if it doesn't, then I don't want to be part of it. I, 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 think, they, I think they need to have fully produced TV no, shows. I, I, the Love Boat theme song already, has already been used. What was it? Uh, yes. Yeah, and so, we already used Rick James Super Freak, so we got to go with something else. So, quite honestly, I'm really hoping that you guys can give me a, a little bit more of a rundown on it because I, I have been. <laughs> ass deep and yeah, <clears throat> way too much over the last couple of weeks. But from what I read, I looked at from what they were saying about the research from the folks out of Google, and I'm like, oh, how how do they even think about what? Oh my god! The the, the story so I they're, in, they're, in, they're inducing bit flips in DRAM devices, which is just crazy. And um, for I no, put in the for semi normal people. What does that mean, John? To Rob Graham's. Which is as like most of Rob Graham's is pretty rational and calm when he wants to be mm-hmm. when he's not being the master troll. Um, <clears throat> when he takes his meds, he took his meds and made this blog post. Um, okay, so, so for the for the for the non uh, initiated, uh, the, you know, DRAM devices is originally basically made out of. Um, let's see if I get this right, guys. NAND gates, if I remember correctly. 
Um, oh, God, I'm having flashbacks. And, and the state of a NAND gate is what determines <laughs> whether an individual bit in a byte is either a one or a zero, right? I a knew byte I is eight that, bits. I that glass. Oh, you guys are terrible. Sorry. Okay. So <clears throat> by just... inducing bit flips, we are actually changing data inside the RAM at runtime, which is a really bad, bad <clears throat> thing. Now, the question is, can we do so in a way that is controllable so that we understand which bits we're flipping? And that part I haven't actually read as far into the article yet. So Great. And, if anybody and, can, can talk about that, and, that would be And great. they're doing the bit flipping by using electrical signals on a chip because those NAND gates are packed so closely together that they're manipulating the electric fields to manually flip them. So you have to have physical access? No. Okay. What, wait, why don't you need physical access from what you just described? Well, because if you, well, you have to have some access to, I, I, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong, because you could do it in software, because you can manipulate DRAM with software, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but can you, can you manipulate the physical environment with software is the question, right. because you would need a physical environmental change to, to impact these NAND gates, I think, by the right. way I'm reading this. And, and Joff, the way my, I understood it, and I could be completely wrong because I only looked at it for a few minutes, that they are using software to affect the physical nature of these NAND gates that emit an electric field in such a way that adjacent NAND gates, the physical changes yeah. are made to <clears throat> those NAND gates, which sense. ultimately flips a bit, hmm. which can change other software. That was my understanding. So, so with the density of uh, technology now, it's sort of understandable that we are getting down into this atomic level, uh, uh, you know, of things. And I, I don't, I far from claim to be an expert at the atomic level, but that that I can imagine that these these field effects can can occur. So the the research is completely plausible to me, but um, it, it it just really kind of blows your mind that. Uh, we're at we're at that level in terms of ex, you know exploitation. Yeah. I think your your RAM needs to emit a tachyon pulse to force <laughs> oh. a spatial anomaly, which could then fix this vulnerability. Gotcha. That's, and I that seems logical. That seems logical. <laughs> well, I think uh, you know um, Karen should have mentioned this. By the way, Th there is Wait. a. Tangent time. <laughs> it is I tangent guess. time. Tachyon it's, pulse is the thing that fixed everything on Star Trek. Right, like, right. Oh, so wait, wait. Here's, gonna here's overheat my plea to the pulse. universe. Here's my plea to the universe. Could we stop losing good people? We lost Leonard Nimoy for those that have... Uh, <laughs> been by now, you will have... Uh, by now, most uh, folks will have learned that we lost Terry Pratchett. Uh, Terry yep. Pratchett uh, passed, passed today, uh, today at age 66 from Alzheimer's. Um, Pratchett was uh, amazing. He was an author who made me think and made me laugh often at the same time, which is quite a trick. So uh, whatever it is that you believe in or don't, uh, stop picking off the people that matter to us nerds. Damn it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I already <laughs> took Douglas Adams. I mean, I, right, right. I, I, again, people who made you think and laugh often simultaneously. That's well, tricky. I, I was hoping, Jack, I was you got hoping, Kanye. You're good. Just, just oh, let me God. get this out, guys. I was hoping. <laughs> Don't make me come down there. Do not make me drive to Myrtle <laughs> Is that Beach. What it takes? My golf Dude, pants totally don't love fit. Car. Come on, um, they're, they're really tight in the crotch. <laughs> All right, I'm going to quote from a wiki here, but I'd really like to get this out. In his autobiography, I Am Not Spock, Leonard Nimoy wrote that he based the, the hand gesture for Live Long and Prosper on a priestly yes. blessing performed by Jewish Kohanim. I think I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yeah, no, I saw Both the hands, interview where he talked about that. Yeah, thumb to thumb cool. in the same position, rep represent, representing the Hebrew letter Shin. So... I, I really was hoping that, 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 that Kiran would bring that out in her interview. But anyway. I should have asked her about that too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but there, there is the uh, hand gesture for link, Live Long and Prosper, which is, which is just phenomenal. And as a cultural phenomenon that's lasted decades now. Um, all right. Where do we want to go next? <laughs> hey, we want to bring it back to <laughs> <around the> security. <laughs> um, let's see. I, I had some stories in here I wanted to talk about. Um, we talked about car. We talked about car hacking on the. We we mentioned that on 
in some ridiculous email chain between all of us yes. before the show. Yes, and it was actually in result to some of Karen's questions. Yeah, but now there, and I knew I had a story on this. So uh, speaking of that, <laughs> Digital Bond has released Can Bus Utilities, um, which is a uh, really? tool set for Can Bus hacking. Really? Which is kind of interesting. What story it, is this? Um, this is my story. This comes from Digital Bond. Hello to all of my friends at Digital Bond. What? Including Dale. Uh, there we go. Story number four. Yeah, and Reed, who says, uh, I thought his comments were interesting to uh, talk about. One of our other fellow Digital Bond, I actually used to work uh, part-time at Digital Bond, um, and I, I worked with Landon. And mm-hmm. so what Reed, who also, I don't know if he still works there or, um, or is an alumni like myself, he says, interesting... The where does your tune in firmware come from? He said that Landon has tuned his car for racing. The tuner sold him a multi-use one, you know, vehicle dongle. You could load a new map on the ECU, and they actually mapped that dongle to his car. I think via the VIN number, hmm. which is interesting. I wonder if the cable that I have from a Mini Cooper works on another Mini Cooper, or if they, because I never provided them. Maybe. If the first time you use it, it locks itself it to be. the VIN of your car so could that be. you can't... Because it, it can obtain the <coughs> VIN via... <coughs> via the CAN bus, right? Yeah. So, I thought that was interesting. Uh, he said uh, someday he'll imagine that there will be car uh, malware as well. Um, he says, I think there needs to be a profit from it, though, and that we might be a little ahead of the a curve, although some say that adware on navigation systems could be a way to make money. Mm. What are your thoughts guys on car hacking, the legality of it all, the like how do you make money on it? Like what are the So I had uh, so that was one of the things that I was thinking about for um CT, uh, CFT, Cyber Fast Track stuff. Um, back in the day when that was a thing. And it was right about the time that I was starting to take some interest into uh, CAN bus hacking. Um, I actually picked up the CAN bus triple from the Kickstarter stuff. I have two of them. Um, and I'm having some very serious issues making them work um, because the gentleman that released it spent his time on the hardware and needs to now step up and finish up some of the software. Like, I can't even get the device flashed and it's not terribly easy to use currently. Um, that said... So- I'm of the proponent that if you bought it, you own it. I can take it apart. I can hack my own CAN bus all I want. The question is how wait, do wait, you wait. monetize you're, you're it? You're in the, this world where software is licensed, not owned, and has been for years. And we've been right. fighting this for a really long time. And now those of us that like mm. to play with cars get really, really, really frustrated when you say, wait, I, I don't own my car? No, you uh, own the car. You just don't own the software that it, run, you, it runs on. You don't on own it. the right to repair it. And I, I mean, I remember years ago being fairly outraged that things like changing the automatic transmission fluid in cars a decade ago started requiring access to a computer because otherwise you couldn't pop open the solenoids that would let the transmission fluid drain. <sighs> um. And let's see. I have to be careful what I say because, like, people know where I work and things. But there's, like, hmm. Hum. Uh, The European, some European auto manufacturers are not as enlightened as uh, uh, they should be. I'm just shut up now. Yeah. But can can you hack your car, though? What are the, I guess it depends how. No, it depends on how you define hacking, but yeah. I, yeah. What do you everybody, mean every hot rodder, racer, yeah. gearhead, petrol head. We've hacked our cars. Sent for yeah. a cent- a for time. well over a century has hacked their cars. Yep. Whether um, it be mechanical or electrical. Mecha- exactly. Mechanical or electrical. Yep. I still have a, a baggie full of resistors in my toolbox from being a mechanic decades ago, which I used to use to either put in line to increase resistance to certain sensors, or I would bridge them to ground to reduce um, resistance or otherwise get creative with them, uh, often burying them in the harness so nobody would catch me. What else do you have baggies of? Weed from the 60s? I (laughs) He smoked all that. That would be pencil (laughs) shavings from the... Anyway, but... uh, (laughs) 
weed from the 60s. The stuff these kids have these days is so much better. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> you know, we did things like swap computers. Uh, we, we had no tuning ability. Once you took away the ability for me to adjust your idle mix... Right or adjust your idle speed. We <laughs> had to fix driver. things. <laughs> you know, it's like ah, let's let's fix this. And so we used to get creative to solve problems. We used to lie to computers. Now computers now are a lot smarter, and they figure out how the car is running and make it clean and efficient. Uh, but and, for and those of the, us that were back, for those of us that were in the first few generations of computerized automotive systems, which. Uh, you know, the first real electronic as opposed to electrical systems started in the 60s. Uh, but by by the 80s, there were computerized things that really weren't quite ready for prime time in cars. And, uh, you know, we had, we had fun with them. We hacked them and we, we probably did things that um, various regulators wouldn't approve. But if I've got a customer that's unhappy with the way their car runs... And putting the wrong uh, heat range spark plugs and wrong computer in it makes a difference. That's great. If I put the wrong airflow sensor in it to solve a problem, that's and their customer happy. shuts up. Uh, my boss stops yelling at me. I get to go on to the next alignment or oil change or whatever crap job and I've I get got. A paycheck. Awesome. Um, it's less common now because the computers are smarter and there's less room for there's less wiggle room. But yeah, we we hack the cars, and yep. now there's a lot more room for inappropriate hacking of cars, I think, mm. because, um, you know, I'm, I remember in the 80s, people putting computers or putting radios in and screwing up the operation of the cars because that was pre-CAN bus, but um, there has never been adequate <laughs> segregation of any of that stuff. of the systems and cars. So, Paul, I think you had I, a... I, I look at it, I look <laughs> at it like, like SCADA, right? I mean, should we uh, be able to hack... Drink. Hack, Oh, yeah, I know. I, I, <laughs> I, think, I think you're right. I, I mean, should, right. We, should, should we be able to hack um, hack vehicles? Yes. Um, should we do it while they're in motion at high speed? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, do it under safe conditions, right? I mean, we, we all, like in the penetration testing industry, we, we engage ourselves in, in SCADA incidences. And what, and what do we, what we do, incidents, what, what we do there when we engage in those uh, uh um, things with our customers is we take extreme precautions because we know there are human safety concerns, and it's the same issue with vehicles. I think. Now, because wait, wait. Can I can I set up Michael because he's been kind of kind well, of quiet. So to, what I'd like to do, what I would like to do is to I there. I am going to be an automotive safety researcher, automotive security researcher, and the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to chase moose onto the highway. Don't say don't 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 add safety and security. Just say automotive researcher. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a research automotive researcher. I'm gonna chase moose onto the highway so that people run into them, clip their legs out from under them, and have half ton animals hit the windshields and shatter and kill them um, to prove that there's a vulnerability in the killers. I think we just figured out Jack's serial killer weapon. Uh, so that I can prove that uh, A-pillars are, in, are insufficiently strong to handle large animal strikes. And uh, it's a known issue because that's why back when Saab was a car, uh, they didn't have that vulnerability because they chose to fix it and others don't. But I'm just a research. I'm, I'm having fun with this. Please don't. So, don't, uh, like, don't chase moose yeah. onto the highway. <laughs> um, so, my so I'm going to chase. I'm going to chase moose out because I'm a. I'm a researcher and I'm concerned for the public. So I'm going to chase moose out until they kill people. Is that how? How is that for uh, hyperbole and a good setup, Michael? It was great hyperbole. Look, you know, Jack. Let me start by paying you a compliment. Um, what What was referenced already was we we had a, a short email thread looking at some stuff based on some questions and prepping for Karen. And talking about the distinction between what makes a security researcher and, and my quest for analogs. And Jack pointed out uh, gearheads and performance enhancers and stuff like that. Um, maybe it was the, the work that I did today and the complete lack of oxygen <laughs> went to my brain. But I, I came out and I went, holy crap, Jack's totally right. But I realized a couple, I, I realized First two things I thought were interesting. Jack, right? we really it was that. bound to happen one day. <laughs> yeah. Well, the first of which is, if, if we look at that, some of the stuff that you laid out, the, f the first of which is, uh, it's kind of what Larry was talking about. If you buy it, 
there's an expectation that you own it. And if there's something that you're working, I mean, let's set aside for a sec- for a second the potential to modify your car in a potentially da- dangerous way and then put it onto a highway that endangers others. All right, set that aside. You you, you want to screw around with something that you own, proverbially. Great. But the other part I thought about was, in my experience, which is more limited than yours, Jack, and probably a lot of people listening. You know, when I used to work on cars or when I looked at people sharing this stuff, it was never about, let me tell you why this sucks and why it's broken and and you better do something about it. It was, here's how you can get more performance. Here's how you can get better fuel economy. Here's how you can get more power out of it. Here's how it can look cooler. Here's how it can sound better. And so it was about fixing. It was about enhancing. It was about performing at a different standard to it. And so what I started thinking about was when we say security research, What I realized, at least in terms of part of our conversation was, if you're taking a hardware device, right, this whole internet of things, and you take possession of the device, setting aside the potential concerns for software for a second, yeah, I actually kind of get that. And, and, you know, part of the way a lot of us learned as kids was we took stuff apart and totally screwed it up and then had some shitty story we gave to our parents so we didn't get in too much trouble and then did it again. Okay, I get that. But what we're talking about when we when we switch over for a second to security research is, so if I'm going to now go and uh, well, let's say perform research on Facebook real time, that's not the same thing as working on your car in your garage trying to make it bigger, better, faster, taking pictures, excited, and talking to somebody about it, right? I mean, I, I see the analog to it. I, I you know, and you know, a plus for the hyperbole of of chasing moose onto the road to prove the a pillar doesn't work. You know, the corollary to that is. How many moose naturally go on the road and how many people hit the moose and have a faulty A-pillar that results in their death per year globally? And is it really a problem we should focus on? Because in security, man, we love risk catnip. Doesn't matter if it matters or not, but it's risk Woo! Let's go, chase it risk down. Catnip. So, the, the, anyway. the risk laser pointer for cats. Yes. Mm. Woo, here it goes. It's, just, it's a risk. I must stomp it out. Uh, someday I'm going to catch that red dot. It's, it's number 1,000 on the list of 1,000. That's not the one to focus on today. But it, yep. it depends on where you are. There's there is no an argument. ER there's an ER doctor in New Hampshire who spends his own money every year to put up uh, those LED highway signs. You lost me in New Hampshire. Um, <laughs> it's where they have geography, Mountains, trees, and <laughs> geology. So. Got it and warm <laughs> and moose, weather. Moose, um, moose. They have seasons. They're about to enter the mud season uh, up there now. Yeah, much like <laughs> much like in Rhode Island, we have entered the pothole season. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not all potholes. In between the potholes, when does that there are frost eaves. Right. Yes. All right, but, all right uh, so he's but, spending his own so, money. He's putting up LED so he puts signs up what do they because do? he he asked. He has to walk out of the ER and tell people that their family members are dead uh, every spring. He uses a Ooh. sign for that? That's... He, he, the guy <laughs> out of his own, yeah, 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 beats the hell out of walking out. Um, it beats the hell out of Next walking up, up and telling people. But no, he actually, dead. like, through various highways in, in northern New Hampshire, he actually puts up those signs uh, oh. that say, you know, be careful, watch out for moose. And, um, uh, as long as I've had enough to drink, we'll tell you. You know what? One of the really grossest things about surviving a moose strike in your car is that uh, the first hour to three hours, they spend picking ticks off of you that fall off the moose through your, wind, your broken windshield onto you. And then you have Lyme disease and all sorts of other horrid things. Um, so yeah, it's a real problem. You know, it's why, and, and I mentioned really Saab. Harsh my buzz. It's why I mentioned <laughs> Saab. If you happen to be in the frozen tundra, where reindeer wander onto the roads all the damn time, that's why you would build mm. uh, you'd build reindeer-proof cars, right? Yep. In Myrtle Beach, you need golf ball bat- protection. You cars. need you need golf ball protection and blind people in ugly pants protection. <laughs> um, I, you know, and I don't know how that works in your car. Uh, you need you need people, you know, t- transiting the, uh, the 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 ditch. What? I you want to talk ge- about you need, you need geriatric driver protection. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and I, want, I want to talk about the second half of Paul's comment about this story was how do you monetize it? And not from no, the, not fr- not that's, from but the, that's the interesting thing. So let's go back. I mean, that goes back to Jack's point. Wanna, when you were just working you on talk performance, about you, you you monetized it by selling your performance enhancements. I think that's the, speaking. What of I kind of realize is that's the crux, right? Are, are you telling people why it's broken, or are you telling them how to get better at it? 
Can we talk about Barbie now? Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like that segue. Speaking of performance enhancing, so who, <laughs> I'm so old. I remember when GI Joe was the same size as Barbie, <clears throat> and their clothes were interchangeable. And that's all I'm saying. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's yeah. disturbing. Wow. I got three daughters. Ken does not fit in Barbie's clothes anymore. Yeah, Actually, well, you know, but yeah, but after four hours, he Ken. does. Paul, you, you have skinny Do you know why Ken, right? Barbie doesn't have any kids? I don't. I don't want because. To know. Ken came in another box. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh, that was very <laughs> appropriate for this story. So, who here would like to hack Barbie? <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wait, you want to hack? What? Not like that, Larry. Oh, oh. Well, yeah. So the article says that the improbably proportioned doll, which. That deserves it's, a whole other discussion. Yeah, a, is yeah. fitted with a small embedded computer, a microphone, a speaker, and a Wi-Fi <laughs> interface. Oh, yes, let's hack it! <laughs> when, when the toy's belt buckle is pressed, Barbie asks a, ask a question and records what the child answers. The reply is encoded and encrypted. Yeah, right! <laughs> and sent over the internet to servers to be processed by voice recognition software. The what software sends a command back to the doll go wrong? to play and reply <laughs> a st- oh, uh, the stored God. in the toy. Yes. Okay. What's the reward for hacking Barbie? I don't. I don't understand. Well, is this on Onion? Is this an Onion article? No, this is a, uh, on the Register. The Register oh, actually all right. uncovered. All right. So it's one step b- it's below. It's what uh, <laughs> I mean. I mean uh, uh, but, uh, hi guys at the reg, L Reg. I love you. Um, yes. Yes. So the the concern is that there could be lots of information about the child and child's family that could be transmitted to Mattel. Uh, is there advertising built into this whole process? And I just think it's cool that we can, now we can hack Barbie. I, I love it. It's flat out wrong to subject children to the need for OPSEC when playing with their toys. <laughs> <laughs> the best part about this is the subhead. Won't someone think of the children? <laughs> I, That's right. <laughs> just just on Twitter today, I decided that instead of when you read a fortune cookie and you say in bed, the new thing should be and who will think of the children? And look, th- this is following it precisely. Fantastic! Uh, I, wait, I, 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 Mike, I didn't realize I we had. Wait, I, I didn't realize we had the FBI on. Oh wait, no, that's Michael. <laughs> so, Listen, if at don't least it's not, at least it's not me. Mike Rogers because then it would be terrorists. Me. 9-11, 9-11. I want one of these Barbies now. I know you do. I, I, you do, don't you? I do. So, and then, you know what's funny? When, okay, that uh, didn't sound crazy. When, when, when we <laughs> Let's started, try again then. When, when we started buying <laughs> toys, when I started trying to buy toys for our kids, uh, when we had the first one, nice, I, I, bought nice all, I bought all oh. of the electronics that <laughs> when the kids got older, I could attempt to circuit bend. So... <laughs> Here's like the thing. Like I want to go. I want to go back into bed with Michael and Barbie. No, I want to go back to your comment, Mike. Back about into bed. Yeah, it, back <laughs> into bed. Uh, ooh, did I just give something away there? So um, Dave Itell says that uh, it exactly started the same as you, Mike. How fortune cookies typically end in, in bed? He said with security products, it's normal to add, except when it doesn't. To the end of all of their claims, <laughs> this IP has protection <laughs> from network attacks, except when it doesn't. doesn't yeah, <laughs> that's like adding the default deny rule at the end, right? Antivirus software <laughs> blocks malicious zero-day attacks, except when, when it, it doesn't. doesn't. I think he's on to something here because I think it really works. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of antivirus that, software and it, when it doesn't, well, hold on. E- except for Tenable, it just it does. They're exempt because we, oh. we weren't there. You had to go there, didn't you? Because it, it always because it imports it does. Nmap X, Nmax. It, it always does. I mean, yeah. except when it doesn't. But that's yeah. okay. It, it, it always, <laughs> always it imports Nmap XML results. It always compares VI to Nmap, Larry. That's yes. Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Paul's always got to put in one shameless plug a, a, a podcast. <laughs> uh, so speaking of antivirus catching. It catches all the things except for when it doesn't. Except for when it doesn't. The uh, the Marion Mandarin Oriental Hotel chain had a credit card breach, um, and that one caught my eye because I've used my credit card there right a little too recently. Uh, yes, because, I know, Larry. Because they make fantastic <laughs> craft cocktails at the bar in Vegas. I don't know about any of the other locations because I've never been there, um, and they mm. uh, they're they're sort of limited on what they're saying, but they 
it, it was reported that, that stuff was going wrong. They looked into the security process, and sure enough, they had something there that was not caught by antivirus and anti-malware. <gasps> Wait, let me get my shocked face. I yeah. thought it was supposed yeah. to detect, detect that. everything. Except, except for when, when it doesn't. doesn't. Exactly, exactly. So the thing that I thought was really interesting about this article was, and I want to quote from the article, technology journalist Brian Krebs reported on Wednesday that he contacted the hotel group after financial industry sources identified a pattern of fraudulent card charges on payment cards, all of which had been used recently at Mandarin Hotels. So the question is, wait, is Krebs getting insider information from those uh, financial industry sources? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, I mean, cool if he is, because... Do you even have to ask that question? But Krebs, Krebs has superpowers, man. Uh, he does, that's, but like... It just goes without saying. Really? That's... Uh, um, that's so what you're saying is you don't need to spend any money on threat intelligence. Just ask Brian Krebs. Yes. Oh, Jesus, my glass is empty, and he says <laughs> threat intel. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You didn't say cyber... Threat intel. Big data cyber threat Krebs. intelligence. <laughs> yeah. Except when I it attrib- doesn't. Hadoop. <laughs> Attribution. Hadoop. Yeah. 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 yeah big data. My, my glass is empty. I think um, <laughs> there's another, stars, there's another fun game. I saw a college humor video today. That it was a, a, a game show. And the game show was um, actually. And it was nerds correcting each other on various statements. So, like, one of their statements oh, that was. That sounds fun. Wow. Yeah. One of the statements was uh, on the show. Firefly, they all rode aboard the ship named Firefly. Actually. Um, actually. So <laughs> um, your actually. answer has to start with um, actually, or it's not correct. Nice. So, Larry, go ahead. Um, actually. I actually don't know that. The um, answer it's that. the Serenity. Um, actually, I don't know. <laughs> um, actually, I think you're um, full of shit. Actually, the name of the ship was Serenity. I think that could Serenity. be a fun game we could play on the show. We could read... A statement about um, actually, I don't think that would be very fun. (laughs) Well, actually, that's a shitty idea, Paul. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Actually, it's going to need more blood. (laughs) Um, Actually, we need about eighteen more drinks before we do a segment like that. Then it would be a halfway decent segment. Well, Well, um, actually, isn't that what we played the other day, me and Larry? Oh no, that was a different game. No, that was a completely (laughs) different train wreck. That was actually. Wait, why is that funny? I don't know. <laughs> okay, I don't why know. So funny? Because we have mummy issues. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of funny, uh, Joff's got store his story number two and my story number three. Oh yeah, that was funny. Oh my gosh, because uh, we just actually did one of these types of things for a customer the USB media drops and see where they plug it in, and you know, this would be a, an epic. USB media drop to go drop around someone's customer a customer with permission, assuming you know they'd only plug it into their corporate laptops. Because <laughs> essentially what this thing does is it takes the 5 volts input from the uh, USB port and converts it to a 100 volts negative and puts it back in the data lines. Wow. And remind, this reminds me so totally from something like Bastard Operator from Hell. Oh, I thought you could say it reminds you of you powered Linksys WRT fifty four Gs from a USB port. Yep. How did and you do fire, that? And Firewire. How did you? If they're twelve volt, do they just run off five volt? Uh, yeah, it all it steps it all down internally, and it will actually run anywhere between three point three and thirty volts, if I remember correctly. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I plugged the cable that you made for me back when we wrote the book. Yep. I plugged in one of these and it didn't work. And this is 12 volts, 0.5 amps. Yeah, so the other one, the other devices actually were stepping it down inside. If we take one of those apart, we can probably figure out what we need to do. I gotcha. I gotcha. Here, let me see. You need a screwdriver. <laughs> you need a screwdriver. So, so guys, what okay. does this mean then in terms of like the, the USB-C? Because I, I, I get it. Uh, only a couple of you are fanboys of Apple. Uh, Jack leading the pack, of course. Mm-hmm. But... So this this week, the big announcement from Apple is, hey, that Thunderbolt stuff, screw it. Everything else, screw it. One port, USB-C. Oh no no, you can do Thunderbolt over USB-C. You have to have a you have to have a special a dongle at seventy nine dollars. Right? Yeah. You know yeah, what? Yeah, you know yeah, what I, I, was you know say, what I want? I want, bucks, sorry. You want, I want USB to have a universal USB port that it doesn't matter which way you plug the cable in; <laughs> it just always fits. That's, that's, that's called that's lightning connection. Instead of plugging in the wrong way okay, the first time, that's, every time. And that's USB C, right? Does that USB C yes. give us that? That's all yes. I want from USB. I don't really care how fast it is. I just I, I don't want to have to look and see and then mash ports. 
when I'm drunk trying to charge my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you have a problem the getting keyboard. the connector in the right socket the right way. I have a problem getting it in the hole. He usually plugs <laughs> it into the Ethernet port. <laughs> so, Calabunga. Paul, you should get an Android phone. Uh, like wait, a, wait, don't get me started. You I just put hair on it. My my droid turbo. Put hair on it, Carlos says. Did you hear that? Did you hear the comment <laughs> from the peanut gallery? Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Uh, an excellent Man. comment. <laughs> That's what you taught me, Paul. <laughs> not get it in, just imagine hair on it. All right, so imagine just, hair just, just <laughs> Carlos, if you're beautiful. still listening, just go make yourself a drink or get a nice beer. <laughs> and Put a little hair on it. Go to security, wiki. <laughs> <laughs> securityweekly.com. Hey, that's why you got the beer. And then check <laughs> the show notes because it's. <laughs> Done now, uh, but we're not going right. to stop. We're done now, but we're not going to stop. I so, need a uh, screwdriver. So I can see more organizations putting um, uh, a little like hair on it, hair, <laughs> hair, and Loctite in their USB <laughs> holes. <laughs> so and and, and their oh, their user community going, what's that fluffy thing on the side of my computer? <laughs> wow! Now you're just taking us really off the rails, job. Jesus. Well, you know, though, I, I just please. it's kind of sad that the answer is. Put some hair Prevent around people it. from using the USB. Yeah. Yeah, well. Because we've, well, just, I mean, look, here's the thing. We, we've had that answer. We've had that answer for a decade. I remember teaching a course. I had information, USB stick. Everybody goes, oh, you can't use that. Okay, okay, what do we do? They all reach into their bags and they pull out rewritable CDs. Oh, well, I didn't block this. Pe people will find a way. Yep. To, and you know, to, and, to do and whatever they want. And that's the joke. Every time I teach a SANS class, I want to give somebody a file. We put it on a USB thumb drive. We pass it around. <laughs> What's on those? Oh, and thumb you drives me, are safe. And you and you want me to plug mm. this thumb drive into my computer? <laughs> oh yes, yeah, it's exactly. probably got malware all over it. Da doink. <laughs> like, hey, like malware is the yeah, least of your problem. Yes, it does. Right, right, malware is yes. It does. Go ahead, plug it yeah, in. Yeah, and malware right, is right, the least of our problems now because a handful of us put the killer USB device out there. Where instead of just getting infected, we get pop goes the weasel. Yeah, and the laptop catches on fire. <laughs> and I am so, so glad somebody has talked about this publicly. Anybody who thinks this is a new idea is really, really, really naive. Anybody who thinks there haven't been destructive devices as far as physical anti-forensics for a while either hangs out with nicer people than I do or is fairly naive. Or has uh, not read nearly oh, I, enough. I, I, I there's, putting, uh, there's, um, uh, there there is a fairly <laughs> elegant solution. The idea that this this solution in, in Killer USB actually charges from it's got a voltage regulator and flips channels, charges up from mm -hmm. your you provide the power to kill your own machine. That's just that's so now yeah. I want to see Carlos, USB Carlos, power fly. hammer. I want to see these two combined at once. Yeah. Otherwise, no. Carlos? And I want a cool theme song to go with it. Uh, you, know, you know what? There's more destructive than either of these is just let your end <laughs> users have... Mm -hmm. I'm going to see how many buttons of Michael's I'm going to... Let your <laughs> end users have admin access on their own computers. All right, Carlos had something to say. More destructive. Carlos. No, I've got something I, I, to say. I, I, I still I, remember I the, the days story. when I put sandpaper in instead of floppy disks. I remember changing <gasps> the center uh, for a piece a of sandpaper. Person. and just. I, uh, that's why I love you. <laughs> and remember what what was happening in the computer lab at the university, uh, but but not only that, but if, if we start thinking about how secure USBs are, let's remember, Microsoft thought that they patched the Stuxnet uh, link right. vulnerability and wait wait they wait, did wait, it. wait 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 Carlos, I got to ask this: Did Microsoft think they had patched the Stuxnet vulnerability? Or did Microsoft tell us that they had patched the vulnerability? Well, taking into account how crappy their QA has been in patches Jesus. For, wow. for quite a while now, I Holy think crap. they thought they patched it. He didn't waste any time getting to that, Jack. No. <laughs> no, he didn't. And, and, and it's, it's what I've been beating, and Carlos knows, there's nothing like <laughs> Microsoft-centric... Security centric mail lists that have been reduced to being patch management mail lists because of the quality oh, yeah. of patching. Oh, yeah. In fact, I remember I have to actually unsubscribe from three of them 
just because everything was it's oh painful. this patch is now being reissued no now these patches cost me reboots no now since Nadella took over and they changed to Agile and they broke up all of the QA guys, I don't know what happened over there. That it's what so is the Barbie thing. It's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I still have. I, I, I still Can we have put that image printer. up? We got to put the Barbie image up <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> Oh my god. Sorry, continue, yes. Carlos, while we do that. Go ahead, Carlos. Sorry. In fact, I remember one day I, I just got so pissed that I re remember uh, writing a, uh, a blog post on la uh, Microsoft killing trust in the IT <laughs> enterprise. And then I went like, I post this, I lose my MVP. Should I do it or not? Un untrustworthy computing. What? <laughs> yeah, so I'm still I'm still thinking about the it. The untrustworthy to computing be honest, group. Uh, there has been quite a large. Uh, Microsoft used to be kind of this example of you can install patches blindly and nothing would happen. They had great QA, but in the last year or probably a bit less, everybody's afraid of patching. It, I've heard it, even it started, people say it started about We're two years ago. Days. But yeah, in the past. What what do you think, Carlos? Nine ten months? It's just yeah, it's unbelievable. And you know they told us that did that that when they when they broke up TWC, the trustworthy computing people, they were going to be you know redistributed within Microsoft. And uh, oh, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say <laughs> I'm not going to name names, but we know folks that uh, should still be making a difference at Microsoft. Who are making a difference elsewhere? Um, yeah, that's absolutely. that's is that's it. Because yeah. yeah, guys, guys, I'm busting to get this out. Guess what? This week there is yet another. Ready for the word? WordPress vulnerability. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Holy shit! I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, WordPress SEO by Yoast is vulnerable to a blind SQL injection. Um, there is a fix available, apparently. Go see your latest article. Yeah, but it's called Drupal? Well, <laughs> you know what that fix is? It's called Lose Your SharePoint. VM Server. No, sure. <laughs> your, fi your fix is SharePoint. No, wait, that's wrong, too. Wow. Uh, I have a question you know, for you I guys. Have to say that um, right now, I mean, you know. <laughs> how, how how do you guys feel with all of this fud that people are going like, oh, the CIA is focusing on hacking iOS. iOS is now more insecure, and I'm going like, what are you smoking? Like, it, it's the job of the CIA to break on all of this platform. So I'm just watching the media just go gaga about this. Uh, it's, a, it's a non-story. Yeah. I, I think they, I, 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 like, I think they make that claim so that they can put in purchase requests for Apple Watches. That's what I think. No, $10, no, no, that. If, if, you're, if, if, if you're a security-minded person, be it you work for the CIA or the NSA or for whoever, or for a Pentas company, and you don't do research on what's popular and what's being used, you should be fired. <laughs> can we put that Barbie image up? <laughs> this, is the bar wow. this is the Barbie image. Barbie gives Steven a pity high five. Steven we, we, thinks we, we, high we fives. Get all a Barbie doll. Steven thinks high fives are cool. Steven is in marketing. <laughs> <laughs> the, the funny Our, part is, Steven's we know what Steven marketing. I, I would Steve. just like to Love say you, Steve. <laughs> high five. I would I'll just, give you a high five the next time I, I see would you. just like to say this about marketing. <laughs> For those of us who have oh, come no. from a technical background, <laughs> hold on. We should pretend all... none of us work for Tenable Tree. No, this is right now. this is purely the theoretical, <laughs> right? This is purely theoretical. For those of us who come from like actually doing shit for a living, <laughs> <laughs> you mean not marketing? <laughs> Going into marketing is really uncomfortable <laughs> because they give you shit like budget, and it's really uncomfortable for those of us who've like. Fought for such things. So go to the darks. Jack, Jack I don't Jesus understand. Are, are you having problem seeking synergy and, and leveraging your core competency to, to All right. add value? Perfect segue. My first story is about a font. Copy and paste your marketing. 
you're marketing bullshit into the, the thing that I've linked to there, and it will pull <clears throat> all of the synergistic big data threat analytic bullshit and change it into the word <laughs> bullshit. It's a it's a it's a sanitization. Where it's, is? Uh, Need a bullshit sanitizing font? Here it is. And yes, it's called Sans Bullshit Sans. Um, and just uh, just put your favorite marketing wow. nonsense. So you know what? And there's a conference coming up in five weeks, so you, you might want to. <laughs> so you know what? Use this you know on. what, Jack? I took your stories <laughs> oh, <Jesus>. and <laughs> plugged them into the bullshit sanitizer, and it only showed up once. once. <laughs> Volkswagen, <laughs> and, yeah, and that was Cloud. <clears throat> That's pretty good. That's cloud. Cloud. There's another great subway segue. Volkswagen subway? shuns the subway because <laughs> we all need to lose money. Like we lose money, lose weight. Like what's his name? Um, Jared. Jared. Uh, he lost who's, money who's too. Who's the mayor of New Jersey? Governor of New Jersey? Oh wait. No. Chris Christie. Yeah. Uh, look, look. Uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. Volkswagen shuns the cloud over data protection worries. Um, Wow. I got nothing all, to say. All, there's all kinds of places you can take that story. None of them and I'm taking them nowhere. I've, <laughs> I've gone off on you, you a know, couple of Volkswagen issues over the years, but I'll remind folks when I say things about VW, remember that two out of three vehicles in my driveway are VWs. Mm -hmm. And the other one, one of them has 410,000 miles on it. Um, the baby's one, one of them is a Golf GTI. With like no. a lowering kit on it, tint, spinner rims. So he awesome. security researched it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he did. He I, I extensively it. security researched the diesel. <laughs> that kind of limits what Charlie Miller and Chris Belisek can do to it. Um, old diesel at that. I, I I once drove a Volkswagen 1600, and I think I accidentally hit a koala one day. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> Not I many of us can say that, job. I do, you're like the I, only one that has ever come on the show and I used the phrase <laughs> "accidentally hit a koala." Well, you most know, of us hey, have hey. never seen a koala in our entire lives. I don't know about that because some of us have been to Shmukon many times, and you know what happens at Shmukon right down the street from the ho the uh, National Zoo. Um, but we we're not going to cats and con. <laughs> but we promised we wouldn't talk about that ever again, uh, except for that one time. Uh, when okay, it, you okay. Full full disclaimer: the koala survived. However, <laughs> but did the Volkswagen? <laughs> the Volkswagen yes, because it wasn't not. a moose, and you were probably driving a Saab, so you had a good eight pillar. I'm guessing. <laughs> Or, or did a nice doctor put up an LED sign to warn you about <laughs> potential <laughs> koalas? Warn you of dangerous ko koalas. Uh, 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 Jack's not my, abused. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 you my, get my, my, left, my left hand shoulder. So do you, do you know how koala? Do you know how koalas feed their young once they get beyond the milk stage? God. I'm exactly. so afraid to say this. <laughs> All right, I, I tell you what, know. I'm not going to say that they feed them their own poop, which has been enriched for a baby koala diet. <laughs> that would be gross. So you know moving what, on. Paul, Wait, did you have any sales? other stories? Uh, kangaroo <laughs> tastes really good. It does, by the way. It does. Yeah, you can keep that one. <laughs> so baby koalas are small salespeople then. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Way to bring things full circle. Oh <laughs> uh, Carlos. He sits down there. Dude, he that sits is two down. that is two home runs in one show, dude. Those he just, one line. Wow. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> the and, the, and the Carlos, Puerto Rican sniper, right? I mean, he just sits there on his island where it isn't snowy. <laughs> Just wait takes for aim the perfect moment. and gently <laughs> squeezes the trigger, and boom! <laughs> and you know what? If he hangs out along with me long enough, Damn. he'll get the ladies too. No. Uh, do you remember that from the first time? Dude, I was have on the PTSD show? What did from do? working the what? at HP. I, I worked at <laughs> at HP for eleven years. I suffer from that's, PTSD. That's what gives you PTSD. That's uh, amazing. What did Carlos the, do the the first, No, you said it. The first time Carlos was ever on the show, you're like, ah, oh, Carlos, your accent, it's awesome. You come up here, hang around with Larry, you'll get the ladies too. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I got you, beat. That was a good nostalgic <sighs> moment. You have to, you have to yeah, say I still day. remember the story I told Paul that he went blabbing to my mom. 
<laughs> now, in all fairness, I thought you would have told your mom a story like that. No. <laughs> She's going to go. Uh, uh, you know what she did? She went I'm home and checked her toothbrush. I'm the sinner at home. Everybody is ultra Christian. I'm the sinner. You don't say that thing to the women in my family. The women's. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, you just hide your toothbrushes. Why, why do you think I'm so happy my wife doesn't listen to this podcast? She's studying to be a pastor. <laughs> if oh, if wow. she ever listened to it, <laughs> I'd be in so much trouble. <laughs> you'd, you'd be single again. <laughs> Just hide your toothbrush, Carlos. That's Just all I for a weekend, I would be dead. Just hide your, hide your toothbrush. <laughs> hey, Paul, we got another story by okay. any chance? Um, I, I don't, I don't know. You've seg faulted my brain <laughs> at this point. <laughs> it's seg fault cord. I would call in a rap flow. If nothing else. If nothing else. <laughs> Other than I look really short in this shot. And say, you so you're, sitting up the, you're sitting on the fail chair, right? I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I sat on that chair where I, you know, fondly poured a drink into my laptop. Okay. So, with that short break, come back to wrap Make up the it show. Stop. <laughs> Make it stop. Yes, I'm the last out. Driving off the <laughs> And we're back just yeah. to say goodbye. Yeah, you know, Jack was bang laughing so hard, banging on the table, he was shaking the cameras across the room. He Good. was. It's awesome. Good. Well, it's a full, full physical experience. Thank you, everyone. It was a full house oh, tonight. Gosh. It was, it was really awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks to our special guest, uh, Karen. She was awesome. Oh, absolutely. She was awesome. <laughs> she was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> a, it's Joff. It's Joff's car. It's, oh, you got they my found 1600. Joff's car on the internet. <laughs> Did you put a koala in front of it? Yeah, there's a koala in the in the grill. Uh, that's. Uh, Alrighty. Well, thanks everyone uh, for listening. Like chicken. Larry, <laughs> take us out. Oh, oh, please take us out. <sighs> Over and get that koala, koala out. <laughs> <laughs> Over and koala. My my left High arm five. Would never be the same. You know why? Because my girlfriend tried to scratch my arm off. It's terrible. Left arm, right, right hand drive. <laughs>